Like, what is a man supposed to do when he suffered loss after just a little over a week ago? A 26-year-old Tariq Cohen penned a letter to his 17-year-old self. The letter touched many fans as Tariq opened up about family tragedies, childhood struggles, and professional setbacks. People hoped the letter would serve as a fresh start for Tariq Cohen, but a week before posting a letter filled with tragedies, another tragedy befell Tariq and his family. Things didn't stop there. One week after posting the letter, Tariq was live streaming an off-season workout when boom, a man who's dealing with so much is hit yet again. One final blow. Tariq ruptures his Achilles right there on live stream. And after already having missed the previous 18 months of football, Tariq may unfortunately have to miss a bit more. We've got a sad video for you today, but one that's gotta be told and one that we'll hopefully look back on in another year or two, see how far Tariq has come and use all the things we're gonna discuss in this video as motivation to keep moving forward. Without further ado, cue the way. An unheralded player from Bun, North Carolina, Tariq never got his due on the high school level. His small stature, ironically, caused most college programs to look right over him, as Dude was only offered one single scholarship to play college football. But even after having a stellar college career, Tariq was set to be overlooked once again due to a combination of things. One, he hadn't grown a whole lot since high school. And two, while he had a great college career, he'd done it all at an FCS program and was thought to have played inferior competition. Fortunately for Tariq, Bears area scout Sam Somerville ended up falling in love with Tariq's film. When asked by former Bears GM Ryan Pace, Sam Somerville said Tariq Cohen was his favorite player in the entire Southeast area. Now, according to the story, Ryan Pace looked at him kind of funny because the Southeast area obviously includes the Southeastern Conference, aka the SEC. So Scott's like, you mean to tell me your favorite player ain't from Bama, Georgia, none of them? That's what you're telling me. Your favorite player really from North Carolina A&T? Somerville responds, you said my favorite player, not the best player. And Tyreek Cohen, that's my favorite player in the area. Ryan Pace and the squad dug in to see what Somerville liked about Cohen so much. Turns out, they ended up falling in love as well as they drafted Tariq in the fourth round of the 2017 NFL Draft. When they dug into the tape, what the Bears found was a relentless athlete who can do a little bit of everything. But during his college days, Tariq was a bell cow back, even at his smaller size. Dude rushed for over a thousand yards every season of his college career, and twice he went over 1,500. By the time he left school, he was the all-time leader, not just at that program, but in the entire conference. But Tariq would have likely never gotten to that point had he not made an extremely tough decision when he was a kid. When his mom was set to move Tariq and his brothers an hour away from their hometown, all during Tariq's senior season, he begged and pleaded and eventually was able to convince her to let him stay so that he wouldn't lose momentum in the relationships he'd built in the area. So Tariq was allowed to move in with his aunt while his mom and his brothers moved an hour away. But shortly thereafter, Tariq's brothers began to go down a bad path. And Tariq, fully focused on football, admits that at the time, he didn't fully realize what was going on with them. During Tariq's college days at North Carolina A&T, both of his brothers dropped out of school and problems with the law became commonplace. Tariq would feel both guilt and survivor's remorse as he was basically forced to leave his brothers behind in order to pursue a better life and his dreams. Thing was, the dreams to Tariq Chase were the kind that could change everybody's lives. So he begged and pleaded with his brothers to stay out of trouble. He just needed a little more time to get fully established. Here's a quote. Just give me a little more time. Lay low. Don't get in any big trouble for a bit more. And I'll make everything right for all of us once I get to the league. I got y'all. I promise. I'll buy you all the Jordans you want. Just give me a few years. But as a fourth round pick, Tariq's $600,000 signing bonus wouldn't stretch nearly as far as he thought. And Tariq's brother, unfortunately, began to let his friends get in his ear. They basically convinced him that since his brother was in the NFL, that he should have already been living the high life. He should have a nice car, something like a Benz. And he should also be able to pick up the tab when the squad went out to eat. Kind of sounds like they put pressure on him to 
to put pressure on Tariq to get the things specifically that would benefit them. And while Tariq always sent as much as he could back home, his brother began to get impatient and he went head first into selling drugs. As a Ricky in 2017, Tariq amassed over 1,500 all-purpose yards. We talking top 10 in the league. He was top 10 in kick return yards, top 10 in punt return, and he had the 11th highest reception total amongst all running backs again. We talking about a fourth round rookie. Whole time the game checks couldn't come fast enough, as Tariq was constantly sending money home, trying to make sure the family was squared away. In 2018, Tariq Cohen reached a new height in his football career. That season, he rushed for a career high, 444 yards while averaging four and a half yards per carry. He relinquished his kick return duties to focus on his expanded offensive role but he continued to return punts. How'd that turn out? Okay, I guess. Dude just ended up leading the entire league in punt return yards, earning himself a trip to the 2018 Pro Bowl, and was named first team all pro as a return specialist. When you go from an undersized FCS player to a first team all pro, bro, that just hit completely different. That season, Tariq also showed off his hands, catching 71 passes for 725 yards and five TDs through the air. But just a few months later in those same hands would be holding thousands of dollars worth of crack cocaine. You wanna know what happened, here we go. So the summer after Tariq was named first team all pro, he's working out, staying in shape, you know, doing his thing. Then he receives a call from his brother Dante who needed to be bailed out of jail. Tariq headed home, but before he bailed Dante out of jail, he stopped by his mom's house where he found Dante's stash. Now there was a pro bowl running back at the height of his career, flushing thousands of dollars worth of drugs down the toilet. He wanted his brother out of that life, but when he picked him up and told him what he'd done, according to Tariq, Dante was furious and while Tariq had hoped things would get better it would actually only get worse as time passed Tariq got used to getting calls from and about Dante but one day he got a call that hit a little bit different it was Tariq's twin brother Tyrell calling to say that Dante had been shot at first the shot was thought to be fatal but it turned out that Dante would survive but unfortunately he'd never walk again he was paralyzed from the waist down. In his letter, Tariq actually tells the story of going to look for his brother Dante's shooter. After seeing his brother in the hospital, he couldn't take it. Anger took over and Tariq kind of blanks out for a time. Now he's riding around the city loading pistol and he's looking for one thing, a guy in a red shirt. That's who was said to have shot Dante. Now obviously there could have been tons of people with red shirts on that day and had Tariq found the guy or the wrong guy, this story could be even more tragic than it already is so thankfully. He did not find a guy, he didn't find anybody. Eventually he came to his senses and he didn't do anything that day that he wouldn't be able to take back. Now I got a little brother and I got a son and I can tell you that my feelings for these dudes is very, very similar. So I can kind of put myself in Tariq's shoes and understand how he got to that place. When you are the older brother, you do anything to protect and sometimes avenge your little brother. It's kind of like an innate primal programming that's damn near impossible to override. But fortunately, cooler heads prevailed on this one and both Tariq and his brother were able to move forward from that point. But the guilt would continue to eat away at Tariq, despite the reality being that none of this was his fault, he just couldn't help feeling like it was. He spent most of his summer crying in the hallway of the hospital where Dante was being kept. But while he was in the room, he did his best to stay strong. He ended up coming straight off that summer to having his worst season as a pro, as he failed to reach a thousand all-purpose yards for the first time in his career. But despite that, following week two of the 2020 season, Tariq finally got some actual good news. The Bears offered him a new contract extension and he happily signed the three-year $17 million extension. This was the type of money he needed to get his family out the hole. With this, he could help his brothers clean up their lives, make his mom's life a hell of a lot easier and less stressful. Things were actually looking up. But then, the very next week, Tariq blows out his ACL, MCL, and fractures his tibia. Tariq, after finally getting to a place of peace, is pulled back down 
after only seven days. But that's not even the worst of it. The injury turns out to be worse than anybody expected, and Tariq begins to lose confidence on if he's still gonna be the same player once he gets back on the field. All while he's dealing with that, he gets another call, this time saying that his other brother, his twin Tyrell, had been in a single car accident and was missing. The friend who was in the car with Tyrell at the time said that the two had been drinking, so when Tyrell flipped the vehicle, he ended up running off into the woods, presumably to avoid avoid being arrested and charged with driving under the influence. Also, he may have had some other stuff going on, could have been warrants, could have been anything, but he runs off into the woods. Tariq is initially relieved when he hears this and he's finally able to fall asleep. But then the next morning, the police found Tyrell's body near an electrical plant close to the scene of the accident. And he passed away trying to climb a fence that he did not realize was electrical. Tariq posted this following the incident. I lost my brother, my twin, myself what a great man he was i'm glad i got to express just how much i love him while he was here god truly calls home the best and the most worthy i'll just miss him forever i got ryan and trini tyrell i swear to god losing a sibling's gotta be hard enough but losing a twin a person you literally came into this world with, and this is after the incident with his younger brother, he's navigating all of this while trying to carve out a career in the NFL. And this is the type of stuff you gotta keep in mind sometime when you are talking down on these players. You don't know what these dudes is dealing with, man. And they're going out here and they're trying to perform, but you know, this man's life was going crazy and it wasn't to no real fault of his own. You know, it's just family. Following the loss of his brother Tyrell, Tariq broke down once again, but he had to get himself together to go to Tyrell's house to tell his six and four year old kids that their dad wouldn't be coming home. Tariq said this was the lowest point in his life, a point where he second guessed every decision he'd ever made. Just playing everything back wondering like, what if I would have moved with them back in high school? What if I wasn't chasing football so hard and I could have been around more? When the truth of the matter is he didn't do anything wrong. He unfairly beat himself up and it got him so low that at one point he contemplated if life was even worth living. But he picked himself up when he thought about his brother's kids. He bought him a house and put money away for their college educations. But just as soon as he began to get the family squared away, his younger brother Dante, who had been paralyzed in the shooting, now he too would tragically pass away in a fatal car accident. Now both of Tariq's brothers were tragically gone and football seemed like it may be slipping away. As the Bears parted ways with Tariq in March of 2022, only one month before he would lose his second brother so when Tariq's biggest fans and supporters saw him go down on his IG live with what looks like another serious injury everybody's hearts collectively broke for a guy who's been doing his best despite impossible circumstances he's been making good decisions making good decisions doing the right thing doing the right thing over and over and over stacking good days but all these things that's out of his control keep happening in his family and for him it's got to kind of feel like everything is falling apart personally and professionally and that right there bro that right there is the hardest part Tariq Cohen dude is solid as a rock man and he's always tried to do the right thing so to see the misfortune that he's been hit with time and time again is nearly unbelievable that this man gotta go through this like what is a man supposed to do when he's dealing with so much death well for Tariq Cohen he's chosen to celebrate life oh, yeah.